Well, hey, hey, guys, welcome to the studio. Today, carpeting versus hard floors in your studio. Does it make a difference? Oh, yeah. Which one should you choose? Well, they have pros and cons. Let's get to it. If you've been following this channel for a while, you probably saw the videos where we did the 3D rendering and design, and we had a consultant acoustician, Ethan Weiner, come in and help us with the design for the studio. And it was designed to have hard vinyl plank floors, but recently I swapped it over to carpet. Now, I bring that up because this room is designed with a lot of absorption built into it. As you can see above my hand here, there's a blue panel that's four inches of rock wool, mineral wool insulation built into framing, same with the orange wall here, uh, the blue wall behind me. Some of these walls are designed to be up to eight inches thick with rock wool. We used 20 bales of it when we built this room, and quite a bit of it went into the ceiling right above this desk, all throughout the room for absorption. But we left the floors hard. If you've ever seen those videos where the person goes into one of those silent rooms, those anechoic chambers, and about a minute in they start hearing their own blood pulse and they kind of freak out a little bit. So our thinking was, with the amount of absorption we were putting in the walls and the ceiling, leave the floor live so we don't go crazy while we're in here. Something interesting to consider is, how is this going to affect the sound in your room? How do different frequencies bounce around and potentially give you a, a problem or a good experience in your studio? Let me show you a chart of a normal room. This is a chart done with REW software. It's free. You can get it and very simple to run. And a normal room, we look at it like this. This is showing you pretty much just the bass frequencies in the room and over time, it's hearing peaks at certain frequencies that linger around, and you can see after about 400 milliseconds, this area here is showing you how much of that sound is still bouncing around in the room. And you can see the, the sound hasn't really died out over the course of about 400 milliseconds. In contrast, let me show you the waterfall chart for this room before the carpet went in. And remembering we did this with an acoustician. Everything dies out almost immediately, very evenly throughout the frequencies. And you're seeing here's my bass frequencies up through my mid and my treble. And it's very evenly done because the room is designed well. Now that means this room would be nearly impossible to figure out what happened when I put carpet in because the chart was so solid to begin with. And one thing that I found is when you're looking at two very similar charts, they can actually sound drastically different. And that's what I have. A fairly drastic difference in how I perceive and record sounds in this room. And that's because a hard floor gives us a very strong first reflection from anything we're trying to record. Say an acoustic guitar mic'd up. Well, the mic's going to hear the guitar. It's also going to capture any reflections from the walls, which are not really a thing in this room, or from the ceiling, depending where I am in the room. If you look above my head, you will see there are hard ceilings on that side of the room, but these are all soft rock wool canvas covered ceilings on this side of the room. So I had an option between the two sides where I recorded how much first reflection I wanted. Now that I have carpet in, it's greatly reduced the first reflection that we would have been getting from the floor. And what that means for me is I'm capturing recordings that don't have really an artificial resonance to them that I end up trying to deal with later with a graphic equalizer or a parametric equalizer. Now, what we don't want is a dead room. We don't want an anechoic chamber like you see people walk in and they go crazy. What we want is some life, some reflections, and in most rooms, including this one, there are enough hard surfaces to keep it natural and ambient sounding, which is a real bonus. But I want you to try a little experiment. Many years ago, one of my jobs was I was a technician for an artist named Al, and Al was completely blind. 
not just legally blind, but I mean, in a dark room with a flashlight right into his eyes, he had a hard time telling if it was on or off. And one time I was had him in, on my arm and we were walking through an unfamiliar area for him and I took him back into a room in the studio so he could check out a, a device that we had back there. And we walked into the room and I said, Al, I said, this is a small room. And I said that so he wouldn't just kind of go wandering off. And he said to me, Steve, I know it's a small room. And I said, Al, how do you know this is a small room? And he goes, I can hear it. The experiment that I want you to try is this, and you'll be surprised by this. Find yourself a large room in your house, like your kitchen or something, adjoining a small room like a, a restroom or a foyer or something. And be careful, but map yourself a little path and shut your eyes and stand in your kitchen for a minute. Give yourself some time. Listen to the sounds that you're hearing around you and you're breathing and that type of stuff. And then without opening your eyes, carefully walk on the path that you've designed for yourself. Get yourself a piece of string to pull yourself along if you need to. And walk into the small room and you will hear the walls close down on you. You can hear the size of a room with no actual sound in the room that you're aware of. Now, the reason I bring that up is this. Every sound that you hear in a room reflects off the walls and gives you a little indication of where those walls are. Humans are actually pretty good at hearing that. And even if you think there's no actual sound in the room, there is. Unless you're in one of those anechoic chambers, there's always enough for you to gauge where the walls are. And if you can tell where the walls are, so can your microphone. If you've watched this channel for a while, you know something about me. I'm not a giant fan of using equalizers to correct sound. I'm a big fan of capture it correctly, miking techniques, use a, a decent mic, and get something that's going to work in the mix without having to be manipulated later. Here's the advantage I think that I get from carpeting in the room. It's a little bit less of a first reflection being captured by the mic, which allows the listener to kind of hear the size of the room that it was recorded in. But that may not be what I want to present to the listener as the size of the room it was recorded in. I might want to tell the listener, hey, this was recorded in a, a club or a hall or outdoors. I can very easily set that type of reverb or ambience right in my DAW. This is a test of the onboard microphone in the Pro Max 13 iPhone. This is a test of the room sound from the same position that I recorded the other test from. This is a test of the onboard microphone in the Pro Max 13 iPhone. This is a test of the room sound from the same position that I recorded the other test from. And I'm sure you would have liked to have seen some tests, some REW tests. The problem is, my tests are so clean because this room is designed so well, you would probably not see much of a difference. But if you do want to see that, let me know in the comments. I'll make that video and I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two charts. But charts that look amazingly alike, like I was saying before, can actually sound really different. The difference is, how do you perceive that difference in sound? Well, in this case, I'm just hearing things a lot more cleanly, and I'm recording a lot more accurately. And one final thing. If you've been doing some research on whether you should have hard floors or carpeted floors or a couple area rugs on hard floors, you may have seen the reasoning that it honestly does not make a difference what you're doing as far as a mixing position near your monitors. Hard floor, carpeted floor, I've read that. And I can tell you that is pretty much the case when I'm mixing or mastering. However, if I do decide to record something live in this room, and I also have a tracking room which is carpeted by the way, if I do decide to record something in this room, what I'm hearing is cleaner recordings that sit better in the mix. So ask yourself, are you recording live with mics? Uh, if you're doing some kind of vocals or acoustic guitar, these are things that I think carpet 
can help with. Well, thanks for coming out. I had a lot of fun making this video. We got a lot of work to do. Let's get to it.